Madden 06, the worst Madden game ever made, but also one of the best Madden games ever made. The first Madden post NFL 2K5, the first Madden on next gen consoles, a game intending to be the greatest Madden ever, a monumental failure, a trailer that was borderline false advertising, an interview completely wiped from the internet. If you played Madden 06 on the PlayStation 2, you loved it. If you played it on the Xbox 360, you hated it. This is a cautionary tale of the rocky development, release, and legacy of Madden NFL 06. Thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. Audible is a fantastic website where each month, members get one audiobook of their choice as well as two Audible originals. Audible doesn't just have audiobooks, however. Audible has podcasts, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, and way more. It can be hard to find time to read, but with Audible, now you can listen to audiobooks in your car, on the bus, or even on a train. Want to feel more accomplished while playing video games all day? Play an audiobook in the background. I've been listening to the audiobook Never Split the Difference, and now I feel like a master negotiator. If you want to receive a free audiobook of your choosing and try Audible for 30 days, head over to audible.com slash softdrinktv or text softdrinktv to 500-500. You can then choose any audiobook you want from Audible's massive collection and it's yours for free. So head over to audible.com slash softdrinktv or text softdrinktv to 500-500. In 2018, journalist Matt Pap Rocky interviewed former Madden creative director Ian Cummings. Cummings, associate producer of Madden 06, told the story of Madden 06's development and release, giving the world an inside look into the turmoil and conflicts within EA Tiburon. Matt published an article with this interview on Rolling Stone. I remember reading it when it came out. A few weeks ago, a user on Twitter named Corey sent me a DM asking me to make a video on Madden 06. I replied that I would eventually get to it, and then he said something that piqued my interest. He said that Ian Cummings did an interview with Rolling Stone about the game, but it was removed from the public. Weird. But he was right. He linked me an Operation Sports forum post where someone had linked the exact article I was referring to earlier when it came out. If you click the article link, it redirects you to Variety.com's homepage. Corey claimed that EA had whitewashed the article, as they had told Ian Cummings not to speak about the inner workings of EA's development team. I was able to locate an archived version of this article through the Internet Archive, which is linked below in the description. Before we continue investigating this, first we need to understand what the article was saying and what exactly happened during the infamous development of Madden 06. To start, there were multiple versions of Madden 06. The game released on two different generations of consoles. The 6th gen of consoles, including the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and original Xbox, and the 7th gen of consoles, which was just the Xbox 360 at the time, as the PS3 had yet to release. Madden 06 was a completely different game on these two generations of consoles. When someone refers to Madden 06 through 12, it's important to know which console the game they are referring to was on. In my Madden 08 video, for example, I'm exclusively talking about the 6th generation version of the game. It's a big area of confusion that needs to be addressed when talking about these games. The 6th gen version of Madden 06 had a completely different development cycle than the 7th gen. The 6th gen version introduced Superstar Mode, carried over many of the great features and game modes of Madden 05, and slightly tweaked Madden 05's gameplay while also introducing the controversial Vision Cone. Madden 06 on 6th gen consoles was a critical success, and a great game at the time and in retrospect. Madden 06 on the Xbox 360, however, was a complete mess. The Xbox 360 was very powerful for its time. This meant that sports games could be pushed to the next level. HD graphics, more storage space, more powerful processing. EA saw and understood this. After killing off the great ESPN NFL 2K5 by signing an exclusive license with the NFL, EA had to bring NFL fans a good product, as Madden was now the only NFL video game on the market. Ambitions were high. Cummings said that the team felt that this was going to be the biggest Madden ever. EA employees were excited. The new technology at their disposal meant that they could create something unlike anything done before. As development began, EA Tiburon started to face some issues. 
EA had just hired an influx of new employees, and features and game modes were unable to be easily carried over to the 360. The studio's culture had changed, and in an unforeseen event, EA had to completely rewrite Madden's entire code from scratch. All sights were set on E3, however. E3 was where EA wanted and expected something great to show off to the world. The world was expecting something huge from the exclusive video game of the NFL jumping to next-gen consoles. Employees would sleep at their desks to meet deadlines. EA had received dev kits of the 360, however these kits were not the same as the final 360 build. It was missing features that would have helped in development, specifically the technology that would allow for the expected next-gen graphics. Madden games up to this point had been relatively simple and smooth to create within the deadlines employees were given, mostly because the developers knew what hardware they were working with, and they knew what could or couldn't be accomplished on it. At the time, EA Tiburon was working on yearly games including Madden, Tiger Woods PGA Tour, NCAA, NASCAR, and a new non-sports related game called Superman Returns. With an influx of new employees acquired from recently closed studios, the Madden team had a clashing of ideas. While Madden had previously been aiming to visually reproduce a television broadcast, the art style completely changed. The new employees wanted to go with a cinematic approach and gave players massive shoulder pads, huge muscles, and with the new HD technology, sweat droplets on each player's skin. The team was getting really ambitious and was trying to use the new technology to its fullest by creating an NFL Films type of feel, as if you were in the middle of Hard Knocks. The team developed the game with lots of high quality assets, however they weren't certain of the true limits of the new technology, they just assumed it would all work. From the article, fire extinguishers in the upper deck were being rendered in full 3D. Doorways used 3D doorknobs. In the Eagles Stadium, a team member rendered a power relay box with the door open, all of the internal switches also utilizing polygons. With 3D grass, dynamic fans, advanced lighting, and more, the game was looking incredible. All that was left was adding the actual players and loading them into the game. And that's when they had an issue. The stadiums were too detailed for the 360 to handle if they wanted to have football players playing on the field. While the team's ambitions were high, they focused more on the little things rather than the whole point of the game, the football. Textures had to be downscaled, details had to be dropped, and things had to move fast as the E3 deadline was approaching fast. More challenges arose as the commentary from the 6th gen versions of the game were unable to be carried over, so Madden 06 on 360 needed brand new commentary. Initially, Tiburon wanted to incorporate each team's actual radio announcer into the game, but they didn't have enough time. Their idea was actually really cool, as radio announcers were used in NFL films over the broadcast commentary, since it was usually more enthusiastic and energetic. But it just wasn't realistic. More big ideas were attempted, only to find out that they were not realistic in the given time frame. Limits were pushed so hard that multiple dev kits were fried. According to Cummings, Tiburon, the EA studio that develops Madden to this day, has yet to recover from the Madden 06 development year. New people coming into the studio daily in order to complete the grand tasks by the deadline destroyed any culture the studio had. People did not know who was working beside them. When the E3 trailer finally dropped, it was incredible. The football world was hyped. From Madden 05, this was an insane jump forward. Player models, while kind of cartoony, looked amazing. The lighting, the weather, the movement, it was mind-blowing. Unfortunately, the trailer wasn't actual game footage. In fact, the trailer wasn't even supposed to go live. 
It was simply a visual target created to help guide development, and EA executives needed something to show at E3 for marketing and grabbed it. This caused a lot of internal conflict, as there was no realistic way the final product could even be remotely close to that trailer. Developers were pissed off. According to Cummings, right around the release of the E3 trailer, developers were sleeping under desks, on couches, just getting any sort of sleep that they could. In reality, the only gameplay they had created was one player standing in a stadium. No actual football had even been done yet, and this trailer dropped promising something too unrealistic. Actual gameplay was leaked shortly after, and the media and player base clowned on it. It looked nothing like the trailer, but instead was goofy, cartoony, and flat out embarrassing. Cummings remembered breaking down mentally a week before launch. The team wasn't going to quit after signing exclusive rights with the NFL after killing off NFL 2K. There was no way Madden 06 could be cancelled or delayed. The game released on November 16, 2005, the same day as the Xbox 360 did. Critics destroyed the game. It lacked depth, it lacked polish, it had frame rate issues, and it was nothing close to what was advertised. Cummings said, You see this final product as a gamer, and it's a turd. But we slaved. That was the hardest I had ever worked in my whole life. To have come up with that result was what was so crushing about it. Madden 06 was the low point of the series, however that code is what current Madden still uses. It built the foundation for future Madden games. Was this a good thing? Critical reception of Madden games went up each year after. However, when you look at, for example, Madden 06 on 6th gen consoles, that game was so much better. It had so much more to do, from the amazing franchise mode, to the Tony Bruno show, to the first superstar mode, to all the great features I've been preaching for a return of each and every year. This was THE Madden where you chose your parents in order to create your player's potential. Madden 06 on 360 had none of this. It may have built the foundation for Madden's future, but most hardcore Madden players would agree that the game has yet to return to its former glory on the 6th generation consoles. In many ways, Madden 06 was the beginning of the end for Madden. So why would EA whitewash this article, as Corey had theorized? For one, Cummings may have disclosed too much inside information in the interview, which EA may have been unhappy with. It also paints a picture that EA does not want to see. Chaos. The NFL signed an exclusive rights agreement with EA back in 2004 because they saw the highest earning potential with EA. For the NFL's sake and EA's sake, a standard of quality and cohesion has to be presented. This article shows the opposite. It makes it seem like there was a lack of leadership like EA was a mess, and Ian's comments about it being likely that EA still hasn't recovered in some ways only hurt more. I reached out to the author of the article, Matt Paparocki, and asked him why it was removed. He claimed it was lost in a server move. All of Rolling Stone's gaming content had been moved to Variety.com, and a large amount of it, including this article, was lost. He said all his lost articles can be found on the Internet Archive, however. He said it had nothing to do with EA. The overly high ambitions of the next-gen version of Madden 06 has hurt the series in so many ways. Today, Madden players are often angered by a lack of changes, or a seeming lack of urgency by the Madden team to bring the game back to its glory days. I don't think it's a stretch to theorize that the failure of Madden 06 has changed the way EA Tiburon develops games. Set your goals low, so development is smooth. EA could not afford to go through another Madden 06 development cycle in today's hyper, cynical online age. The drive and passion seen in this article by the overly ambitious developers was likely never seen again. It was too risky. Today when you play Madden 20 and wonder why relocation teams haven't changed in 7 years, or why it seems like there is a lack of innovation, or why Madden on 6 gen consoles had more depth, maybe it's because EA fears Madden 06. EA does not want another disaster, it's not worth the risk to innovate to the highest potential. Madden 13, to a lesser degree, was another huge step backwards for the series, as they were rewriting the code to that development of Madden 25, their first game jumping to the following 8th generation of consoles would go smooth. In the process, Madden saw numerous game modes and features stripped away. With a new generation of consoles releasing this year, it's going to be very interesting to see how EA plays it. So many years later, I think most would expect a big jump forward. Now is the time to get ambitious again. 
However, the shadow of Madden 06 likely looms over EA Tiburon, forever haunting the studio's desire to achieve something great.